Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome back to Legends of Chess 2020, third day of the semi-finals. Um, just reminder, after two days, Magnus Carlsen qualified to the grand final. He won against uh, Peter Sfiedler 2-0. Uh, and uh, in the another pairing, Yanni Pomniashi won in the first day and Anish Giri equalized in the second day. And now we have day number three, decisive. Uh, we had four draws in the rapid time control. So Yanni Pomnashi was very, very creative, very fast. Um, but Anish Giri also uh, managed to find the resources in the in the worst positions and sometimes also he get the very good positions after the the preparation uh, in the opening so uh, very interesting uh, four draws in the rapid time control then two blitzes should decide who gonna advance to the grand final if that's not gonna happen then armageddon will decide uh, however in the first blitz we had the draw again so five draws in a row uh, and the sixth a game was decisive. So without further ado, let's see what happened on the board. Uh, Nepo opened with e4. We have e5, knight f3, knight c6 and now d4. So scotch game uh, was chosen by Nepo and uh, now e takes on d4, knight takes on d4, knight f6 attacking the pawn and white has a choice uh, to go for slightly sharper line, uh, quite crazy line or very very safe. I will just show you how to play that safe. Knight c tree defending this pawn uh, and after uh, pinning the knight uh, knight c6 b takes on c6 and now bishop d3 defending the pawn on e4 this is the main idea and then black just undermine this pawn uh, e takes on d5 c takes on d5 and then after castle nothing special here bishop g5 c6 strengthening this um, this mini pawn chain uh, and the game can continue but as you see uh, not much, you know, to be invented here. Uh, very silent, very simple, and and it was played, of course, plenty of times. Uh, Nepo goes for exchanging the knights first, um, and after B takes on c6, e5. So he don't want to keep the pawn on e4, uh, but rather push it. And sometimes this pawn can be very, very annoying for black. We have queen e7, pinning the pinning the pawn so the the knight cannot be taken queen e2 and now knight has to retreat or move forward to d5 uh, and here i will just show you again the main line here is c4 kicking the knight and after bishop a6 uh, yet another pin a lot of pins in this opening very tricky one um, the main line is b3 defending that and after g6 um, trying to develop the bishop this way uh, f4 bringing some support to the central pawn and after d6 undermining that uh, queen f2 so uh, this pawn is not longer pinned so the knight has to uh, retreat this time retreat knight f6 and now you see another pin pretty crazy uh, bishop e2 and after d takes on e5 just castle and the game also can continue it's a very well known continuation 91% uh, of the games ended in the draw um, on the top level as well. So Nepo knows how to play that. Um, Grishuk knows how to play that. Wesley So knows how to play that. Uh, Levon Aronian, uh, a lot of draws in this in this opening. However, Nepo goes this time for some different line and plays h4. We have a5 by Anish Giri. So he wants to bring the bishop to a6 and maybe exchange the light square bishops. It was not possible without the pawn on c4. Uh, and now we have c4 playing uh, not really against that, however, in the spirit of the opening. Bishop to a6. Uh, and now instead of playing b3, which uh, would be very natural here, and it was played, of course, in the past, knight d2, defending the pawn uh, this way. So bringing just another uh, defender just to overprotect protect the pawn uh, and here f6 was possible of course uh, and if white decide to to exchange the pawn then the knight can retreat to f6 but uh, Anish Giri played knight to b6 
uh, putting some pressure on c4 uh, and here Nepo actually goes for h5. Now uh, let's stop for a bit. Why did he play h5? So the main idea for black would be of course play g6 and bring the bishop on this diagonal. However, which h5 is not really possible because uh, white gonna open the, the h file. So uh, white would get the quite nice advantage. Giri tries uh, to bring the bishop to the game this way, queen e6, and now opens this diagonal. Uh, we have h6 now, so Nepo doesn't care that uh, this pawn can be taken. We have g takes on h6, uh, and black has one extra pawn, however, this pawn structure is not the ideal. And one important thing, uh, white can play f4, and this pawn on f4 cannot be attacked by the, by the g pawn, because g pawn doesn't exist anymore. Uh, we have b3, very natural and castle by Anish Giri, bishop b2, bishop g7, and now castle by Nepo as well. Uh, so the kings are in the safety, uh, of course black has uh, some kind of protection, white is a bit more vulnerable, however it's nothing serious yet. Uh, we have rook h to e8, putting the pressure on the, on the pawn on e5, uh, but now we have f4 supporting the pawn, and as I said, uh, the g pawn cannot undermine, you know, the, the, the base of the pawn chain, so uh, position of white is, is pretty solid here, and it seems like... Uh, white gonna get the advantage and now what to play as black it's a very important question because uh, black actually doesn't have the space uh, to develop the pieces to improve the position of the pieces and also this pawn is a uh, pretty annoying uh, what black could try for example is um, to play d5 uh, Maybe white could take the, the, the pawn on d6 uh, and that would, you know, solve a couple of problems. However, white would have much more interesting options. C takes on d5, uh, actually sacrificing the exchange this way. Uh, bishop would take the, the, the queen. Uh, pawn also takes the queen and after bishop d1 e takes on f7 rook e7 bishop a6 with check uh, the rook can uh, get to the center uh, and after rook f7 let's say g3 white still keeps this uh, very solid pawn chain which cannot be you know easily attacked so being the exchange down however you know white still is doing really great this two past pawn, connected past pawn, protected past pawns is, uh, is a really nice asset of white. So probably uh, this would not be the greatest idea. This is why Anish Giri plays f6. Attacking the pawn in the center and trying to destroy this, this very solid and annoying pawn chain. Uh, however, white has a very, very nice continuation. Knight e4 with the threat of forking the bishop and the queen. Uh, and it looks pretty annoying, uh, but black doesn't have, uh, you know, much choice how to continue. Bishop b7 would be losing because the knight can go to f6. Uh, and after it's taken, the rook can go to, to h6 um, and you know make this very annoying pin win the the piece and uh, and that would be very difficult to defend by by black or simply e takes on f6 it also works uh because white simply gonna win the exchange so queen e4 queen e4 and after rook e4 bishop d8 uh, king d8 and now f5 so this pawn uh, survive all the mayhem and and now it can be defended very easily also the rook can uh, can actually uh, support this these pawns are very very weak and can be attacked very easily so white has a completely winning position so it's not possible uh, to play any passive move uh, anish giri actually found something very very creative and played f to e5 uh, and now what is the point knight c5 winning the bishop but only temporary so queen f5 and after taking the bishop a niche play e takes on f4 and now the queen controls c5 so the knight is trapped so now the idea is very simple come and take the knight and here is also very important uh, moment of the game because look at this 
Uh, the queen is under attack, but also the bishop is under attack. White already won one piece. Maybe it's time to sacrifice the queen because uh, look at this. Bishop g7, rook e2, uh, bishop e3, and black has the queen and white has pair of bishop and the rook. So white is pretty good here. Uh, not really, because f3 actually changed uh, everything on the board. Uh, bishop f3 and now queen g5 actually wins this bishop uh, with, this, uh, with this check. So that's actually much better for black. So this sacrifice this time just wouldn't work. Uh, definitely Nepo uh, was thinking about that as he already sacrificed the queen against Anish Giri in the semi-finals. If you haven't seen that game, check over there. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's also a very, very nice game. Uh, so we have queen to d3, as this sacrifice would not work, trying to just exchange the queens. Pretty pretty, pretty easy plan, and uh, Anish uh, doesn't agree. But first, this bishop, of course, is hanging, so bishop b2, king b2, and now queen e5. We have queen c3, still asking to exchange the queens, uh, and now Anish say, okay, uh, but first I'm gonna take this knight, king to b7. We have queen e5, rook e5, still controlling c5, uh, and now is a very interesting uh, moment of the game. Uh, so feel free to pause the video and find the way to saving the piece for white, okay? White can actually save the piece, don't need to give it back. Uh, this knight can be saved uh, or exchange for this knight. That's, that's the hint, so feel free to pause the video while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So the way to save the knight actually is b4 and now of course if the if the pawn takes it then the knight can jump to b4 and the knight is is free uh, and also if king a6 then c5 with the attack on the knight and the check so king a7 and after exchanging on the queen side a couple of, of pawns uh, rook h6 and this pawn also gonna fall uh, the bishop can can join the attack the rook can can go to h1 so it's undefendable uh, so white gonna have the the bishop for for two pawns uh, and it's still winning for white however it's probably uh, nepo wasn't so sure about that so he played uh, rook h6 exchanging this knight actually for two three pawns. We have c5, so now c5 is not possible and this sneaky check is not possible anymore. Uh, knight to c5, rook to c5 and now rook h7. So well, let's see what just happened on the board. Uh, material is equal, material is equal, but white has much easier game. Uh, we have rook to f8 and now bishop to e2 with the idea of bishop to f3. Uh, and now this pawn not gonna advance, so great blocker. And also uh, this bishop gonna be protected by the pawn and also it's gonna protect the pawn. So mutual protection, very well known idea. Uh, and here actually Anish Giri should continue something like c6 uh, and after bishop f3 bring the king over here uh, and then this pawn would be protected that the rooks can go somewhere and the game could continue however Anish blundered the pawn and played d6 uh, but this is the blitz and uh, and actually Nepo didn't take the pawn this is free pawn you see that because the pawn is of course pinned uh, but Nepo just continue his plan bishop to f3 with check we have king b8 now um, the pawn of course cannot be taken uh, but rook e1 so positionally uh, white are much better uh, knight c8 for now defending e7 so because if these rooks actually manage to get to the seven rank and double the rooks over there it's just game over uh, we have rook e6 so nepo tries this way uh, and, and attack this way together with this bishop is just deadly threat we have rook to g5, now defending h6, the pawn defending e7, so uh, how to approach? Uh, king to c3, bringing the king to the center, rook f to g8, now threatening to actually sacrifice the exchange uh, and getting the pawn, the passed pawn, that's the, that's the last counterplay black can actually find. Uh, we have rook to f7, saying, okay, you can uh, sacrifice the exchange, but I'm gonna take your passed pawn and 
and that's not gonna work. Rook to e5, asking to exchange the rooks, but now Nepo is of course not interested. Rook to h6 and now preparing to um, double the rooks on the on the seventh rank. And now rook e7 is the last moment where um, Anish Giri actually can try to um, counter that. However, after rook h2, h7 and, and exchanging the rooks, this pawn gonna fall and white are in the completely winning position. So he played a4. It's just desperate move, uh, but he doesn't have much choice. We have rook h2, h7 um, as planned and now a takes on b3 and rook to c7. Uh, and threatening actually checkmate in three moves because together with this bishop that's gonna be the checkmate in three moves um, then this knight not gonna help because double check and that would be the checkmate so Anish doesn't have much choice and uh, he have to give up the exchange rook to e3 with check uh, king to b2 and now rook f3 g takes on f3 and now b takes on a2 uh, king a2 and rook g3 going after the, the pawn and trying to create the passed pawn. Uh, we have rook to b7. Nepo said, no, I'm not interested in that. King a8 uh, and now rook b3 defending the pawn. Rook to g2 with check. Uh, king a3 and now rook c2 going after this pawn. Nepo defends it, but after rook c3, he doesn't defend this pawn anymore. He plays king b2. Uh, and now after rook to c3, Rook h8 winning the, the, the knight. Okay, the knight is pinned and it cannot be defended as this rook actually uh, controls the, the b7 and b8 squares. We have rook f2 and after king c3, Anish Giri resign. He can do nothing about, uh, you know, losing the knight. He gonna lose the knight uh, and then the rook gonna go after the, after the f pawn. The king is very close. Uh, so the, the pawn gonna get catch and um, and being up the rook of course is winning so six game it took six games to actually uh, figure out who gonna be the the second finalist congratulations to Jan Nepomniashi and I would like just to show you this graphic Magnus Carlsen as you see one after two games and Jan Nepomniashi is the second finalist after three days of semi-finals uh, and yeah if you like this video press like if for some reason you don't like it press unlike and feel free to subscribe if you don't want to miss um, other material smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one